What do we got going on here? Got some chains drying by the ultrasonic cleaner. Oh, I got some rubbing alcohol, clean cassettes, new chains. Oh wait, it must be waxing time. Let's go over my latest whacking, whacking, waxing techniques and uh, see how wacky it is after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy, and we are doing some waxing. Yeah, you hear the bubbling going on in the background, like a mystery brew of crazy concoction. Well, Waxing has become very popular in the last few years, but it's been around for a couple hundred years. And I dived into this about, oh, I would say about a year and a half, two years now, of testing different things and trying different waxes and so forth. Well, I've come to uh, the latest iteration of what I'm doing, and I kind of wanted to share that with you of the kind of tips and tricks I've seen from other various waxers out there from a guy from Australia to a guy in England and Silka himself. Yeah, I'm talking about the Silka chain wax. Yeah, well, it's gotten pretty good popularity. I got several of my customers riding on this wax products of various kinds, and it seems to be, so far, pretty good. Well, back in the day, woo -hoo -hoo, Turn of the century, when they're doing the Tour de France and so forth over in Europe, they use candle wax. Well, this is a little more of an advanced version of candle wax, although Zero Friction did a test on straight candle wax, and it worked really well. Actually, it outperformed a lot of the wet lubes and wax lubes out there that are liquid versus the actual wax treatments. So, hmm, got to be something to do this, right? An outfit in Australia, they actually did some testing of some componentry. So there's data behind that of how wax performs as well as protects the chain ring, cassette, derailleur, and so forth. So it lengthens the long life of your actual drivetrain. Well, there's several different techniques, right? And you've floated a lot of different things. And what I've landed on by looking at all this kind of research data and what people have been putting out there is, okay, you're going to do wax. Well, you're going to have to put a little heavy lift up front. Um, either going to do it yourself or buy pre-wax chains. What I've seen so far out there is you get three chains. And the reason why you get three chains is when the wax starts wearing off between 200 to 500 to 600 miles, all depending what kind of ride you're doing, either mountain road or gravel, you'll swap that chain to the next chain that's pre-wax to keep that going. So it starts squeaking and so forth and that kind of thing. Um, then you have the third chain, and when you get to that third chain, then it's time to re-wax all three of them. And you could either do it yourself or send it to a service like mine and have those chains re-waxed. That's awesome. And the, the stress test and the stretching of those chains are, well, yeah, you're dividing amongst three different workloads, but it also that waxing is very prevent, preventing your cassettes. So the length of it is going to be, I don't know, five times maybe 10 times the length of the drivetrain where you're usually just using a wet lube. So, hey, it's worth an upfront investment. In addition to, it's very smooth and very quiet. Uh, once you go wax, it's kind of hard to go back. One of those situations where I've waxed a lot of my bikes and there's no you know, sticky residue kind of thing, it's insane. It's just one of those deals. So when you're looking at wax, so there's several services out there, including mine. We'll all have pre-wax chains new that I wax, put back in the packaging from various speeds. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. Then you just buy it with the cost of the chain and the wax service already included in the wax chain itself. Or you can purchase the wax itself and do the whole melting process and you can check out the Silka video of how they do theirs but I'm just going to go over what I do with mine and I came to a conclusion of what I'm working with. I'm going to show you that right now. Pardon the interruption, there is more. More you say? Push the more button. Push it. 
push it. I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube. And now back to your original programming. So this is what I came up with. I want to tell you the process. You take the new chain or your used chain and you want to thoroughly clean it. Um, ultrasonic cleaners are probably the best way to do it, to get that thoroughly cleaned. But what you want to do is with ultrasonic cleaner, what I do with mine is I take that chain and I put it through three different cycles with a concentrated simple green. Um, in a bag inside the actual tank. And what that does is kind of breaks down all that gunk inside the actual chain itself. And I do that with a used or new. And then rinse that and put it into another bag with straight alcohol. Um, not the drinking alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Um, what that does is put it in the chain there in the bag and cycle that three, another three separate times. So each five minutes I pull it out and massage it and put it back in there and let it do it. There's also a heating element contain, uh, uh, element to the ultrasonic cleaner, which actually really helps kind of get all that gunk out. And once you do that, then you dry them, just like this. You take a, a spoke, you bend it so it becomes a little hanger, right? And this way it gets thoroughly dry and rubbing alcohol evaporates. So you basically have a, a contaminant-free, hopefully, chain for the most part. And once you have that contaminantly free, then you're ready to do the wax. So the cleaning is the biggest, biggest element of this whole process. You heat up the wax, and I use a, a water bath system like this because I want to be able to take different waxes. I, this is a secret chain. This is my house blend, which is a pair, uh, wax blended with beeswax with a little bit of graphite, which is, actually works really well. Um, so between the two, and you know, you have that service to have it either waxed or you buy the pre-wax. But I, with the pre-wax, decided to go with the the secret chain because it just makes it simpler and it's more popular, what have you. But the services you can pick either this one or the beeswax to have it done, which I have right here. Um, but anyway, the the cute one is like this. You know, it comes with a little honeycomb with the beeswax. So that was kind of kind of cute. So the process, clean, clean, clean. Clean it, if you ha don't have ultrasonic cleaner, you'll have to use jars and just kind of you know, clean, rinse, clean, rinse, clean, rinse till you get to this point. Well, I use a, a basically a spoke and I bent it into kind of a J here. And the reason why I have, a, I have a hook here. Well, what we're looking at is this chain on the hook. So that way I can dip it, hang it to dry. Well, here is my tricky bit in this take note. So I can take, I can get about three chains in here. If you're doing it yourself, you can get these from Walmart, the glass containers, and the, and the basically what it is is um, it's a fondue maker that we got for our wedding that we never used. <laughs> so here we go. Um, you put it in the wax like so, and do multiples. This person did a wax service, so we're doing three chains. And the wax service includes cassette cleaning, as you saw the cassettes being cleaned too. And you can layer these in like so. And you want to put it in there for at least five minutes, if not longer. Oops, and make sure it's completely, completely submerged. like that. Um, the reason why you want them completely submerged is you want that wax to heat and get into that chain. Well, you want that chain to come up to temperature as the wax is. That's why I'm still cooking it. So when you wait that five minutes or so, it really heats up that chain and then it moves everything in. So here's my secret sauce. Since they are in their individual containers, I'll show you here. 
so with that with the lid, I'm able to fold those spokes over and close it up in a container like so. And then I can take it to my ultrasonic cleaner, take my basket, put it upside down. Oh wait, nope, that's not right. This little basket. Put that upside down. Then not smudging it, but just the top hat, the, the top portion. Whew, I got a lot in there. There we go. Then I could run the ultrasonic cleaner. And with all ultrasonic cleaner is going to take that wax and really get into all those bits. Just five minutes, one cycle. This is heated still from cleaning all those chains and cassettes. And then when it's done, I put it back into, back into this little guy and heat it again. So it basically cooks for 10 minutes in the, in the crock pot here and another five minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner. And after that, then I hang it to dry above that. Well, again, let's go over the process. Process one is cleaning the chain, right? Get that clean, clean, clean. And second process is putting it in the wax. And all the waxes videos I've seen so far, they just dip it in the in wax for five to 10 minutes and then they dry and let it sit. Well, that's great. But I add that extra layer of ultrasonic cleaner, actually just kind of really gyrates that liquid, puts it into the little microscopic spots, bubbles, explosions, what have you, and that really gets the chain coated. Then reheat it so it's still cooked, So and then I hang it to dry there. Well, what do you do after that? Well, there's no little trick. And of course, since I've done this, I forgot my timer. But anyway, you put your timer on for five minutes, and then you put it in there. So... Everybody's seen one of these guys, right? Anybody try to use them? They don't work for a darn thing. Yeah, I mean, there's companies out there. I don't know. It's one of those things you put on the bike and you clean it. Well, this is a chain cleaner that you put on a bike. I got this out of some random uh, toolkit thing, an inexpensive one from Bike Hand. It doesn't have to be an expensive one or not. What I've done, once the chain is dry, guess what? I put the chain as in, like if it has a power link, I put the power link in there. So it's all in one complete chain. Then I put it in here, then I just run it through. And guess what? It takes off all that excess wax on the outside. That's gonna shed anyway when you do that first ride. So there lies the <laughs> trick of kind of cleaning the first layer of shed. And you can kind of feel it break free and be a little more pliable. So the end result for the customer, either a pre-waxed or a wax service, for me, it has that kind of already pliable, it's not super stiff, and you don't have the super flakiness. Still, you want to do it outside, put the chain on, or in your garage where you can sweep up, because that first ride, you're still going to have that, I don't know, five, three to five miles of riding. It's going to kind of act a little stiff uh, because of the wax, but once it breaks free, it becomes super silk after that. But by doing this after waxing the chain and letting it dry, that actually breaks it up and actually you know, pushes that process down. I'm not removing any wax that's going to be actual vital to the actual linkage system in the chain itself. And you don't need to apply wax to the cogs or the crank set or the cassette. That's a no bueno. You want to keep that dry. So the idea with the wax is supposed to, wax chain is supposed to make it super smooth and it protects the chain. I have wax chains on several of my bikes and I've ridden several miles, quite a, you know, 100, 200, 300 miles, and they're super smooth still and very fluid. Well, here's a little trick that if you have just one wax chain and you do the secret uh, silica for, I'm sorry, sorry, the silica, super silica, or not silica, they do make a liquid version of their bag version. Well, they claim is it's the exact same thing. This has just been comp uh, compressed into like 10% water. So um, whatever that process is, infusion, they have some fancy, it's on the bottle here. Um, ultra fast, neo scale, tungsten to sulfide. Well, anyway, I've used this on just straight chains that I cleaned and it definitely has the same feel and consistency. Not a problem. Well, here's your trick. If you have a chain and it's just the, the secret wax, 
and you got the liquid just buy a little this is the bigger bottle get the little bottle this one's like 40 bucks it's not it's a lot um, for you and I haven't used I've used it on several chains I've only used like a little bit of it so you just need a little bottle and if you're going to be using it to refresh your chain before you get a chance to wax it again here's a good trick so if you don't want to have three chains you just want to go with one chain and just do the wax and you're doing it yourself get a little bottle of this is if you're on that one ride or going to another ride, last ride, it starts squeaking, making a little bit of noise, then you can do a drop on each cog. But I suggest taking the chain off, lay it out on your bench, do a drop on each one, let it sit there, and rotate it over, and do it again. That way you're not dripping all over your drivetrain. Good trick, right? Then once it's dry, then you can put it back on your drivetrain, and, and then you get good amount of miles. Here's the other trick that... Mr. Silka has said himself, the CEO guy, if you do this process on the chain once, you still have a ratio of somewhere about 10% um, is, is evaporated, right? If you do it another time, that reduces that evaporation less than the 10%, it's not like down to 5%. Then you do it one more time, do it three times, then you're basically essentially having that chain wax to the point close to what the wax hot wax does. Well, the trick with the hot wax is really kind of penetrating all those little bits and so forth, granite, and you know, it's just, you know, it's one of, it's a better way to go that way, but if this is the next best thing, and the chain fills exactly the same you know, cleanness, it doesn't get all your fingers, it's great for kids' bikes, I swear. No, no more black chain remarks on your legs and so forth. And if you do mountain biking, there's a whole process. You have two waxes, one for cleaning the wax, and you just reheat it, and then you put it back into the fresh wax container. So there's several different processes to it, but this is what I landed on myself, and it seems to be very effective between either my house brand or the Silka. For sure. So yeah, let's check this. Let me show you what I do. So definitely been in there for five minutes. So I take my little hooks and they just fold down. And I take my lid. Oh, actually, I can't pull this out. I'm wearing gloves, so it's, you know these are pretty thick gloves, so they don't feel the heat. So you got to be really careful about this part of it, because you don't want to burn yourself. And you hear it snap and there you go and I just move right over here then I turn it on well I will uh, turn it on because it will mess with the mic and so forth but hey that's pretty much my new process or my latest process of cleaning the chain and getting it waxed and the ultrasonic cleaner magic and then hanging it to dry, then it's ready to go. So, yeah, have any questions or anything? You do your own process or anything you see that you do differently that might be great, throw it on the message, you know, comments below. Hey, and uh, yeah, if you're looking for pre-wax, I got it on my website. If you're looking for that services, same thing there too. Well, uh, thank you for spending time in the garage with me, and I hope some of this clears the mud a little bit for you. And then again, if you don't want to do the heavy mess lift yourself, you can buy the chains pre-waxed for me or various other individuals out there doing the same process out there at different kinds of chains or you can do the service where you just send us the chains I will mine includes cleaning the cassette as well because you want to have a clean cassette then you can clean your derailleur or what have you yourself or crane set while you're waiting for the chains to be waxed and sent back to you so Therefore, more details on my website for that information, and I uh, hope you have a great day. If it's beautiful in your neck of the woods, please go for a ride. And again, from the garage. Welcome back to Another Guy Bicycles, hanging out with the guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh.
Welcome back to I Know a Guy by School.